Hey, Sean Foyt here. Welcome to the Hold the Line podcast. We're here at Camp Allah in the heart of Capitol Hill, Washington, D.C. And we have the honor of having Hung Kao here with us, who's an amazing man of God, just announced his candidacy for Senate in Virginia, which we're so excited about. We can't wait to hear about. Thanks for being here. No, thank you so much for having me, Sean. Yeah. What, what a blessing. Your story is one of the most phenomenal stories. I mean, it's just, it's it's incredible. Like, I, I just want you to share just a brief little synopsis. I know you probably shared it a million times, <laughs> but I think everybody out there, I mean, you got it. You guys got to hear this story of how he got to where he is and where God has him. And it's just, it's just amazing. Well, it's, uh, it's really looking at and seeing God's fingerprints in your life the whole time. Mm -hmm. Kind of like the Apostle Paul, right? I mean, he, how did a Jew from Tarsus become a Roman citizen? Well, you know, his great, great grandparents were moved uh, yeah. by Antiochus IV to Tarsus to build up the, the garrison there. And then from there, his grandparents were so loyal to uh, Caesar yeah. that Caesar paid them back with uh, with citizenship. And so I'm not trying to compare myself to the Apostle Paul in any way, <laughs> but it's one of those things where God had his fingerprints in my life. Right. So I was born in Vietnam, and at the age of four, we, we, were, we were allergic to lead, you know, so and there's a lot of it flying around, so we had to evacuate and leave Vietnam. But years before that, my oldest sister was actually born in Ithaca, New York, and my parents had the foreknowledge to just go ahead and get her a, an American passport. So wow. by birth, she's an American citizen, and they had to take us out uh, really at the very end of, uh, right before the fall of Saigon. We came to the United States, and my father, you know, in Vietnam was the deputy minister of agriculture, and um, his friends were like, well, you know, you, 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 you could do, you, I guess you could be a farmer here, or you can go to a third world country and help develop that and make a good life for yourself. So we moved from there to uh, West Africa, to Niger and, and the surrounding areas. And uh, so I grew up speaking only French and, and Vietnamese at home, French in school. That's crazy. And at the, around 12, my parents had to make another hard decision. Well, you know, he doesn't speak any English. We need to get him back here. So my mom had to bring us all back, myself and my four older sisters, back to the United States. My dad continued to work over there for uh, up to 25 years, you know, and by himself and coming home every every six months. But that's sacrifice, right? I mean, that's yeah. what that's what we do for our family. Mm -hmm. And so I came back here. Um, I went to school here. I uh, learned English, and then I attended the most... Uh, Literally, I was the inaugural class of Thomas Jefferson High School for Science and Technology, the uh, the number one magnet school in, in the country. Wow. And then I went to the United States Naval Academy, and something happened to me <laughs> at the Naval Academy where I think is my ego, my hubris. And again, I was raised uh, Buddhist. I was raised in a Muslim country, and um, I was kicked out of Naval Academy. Wow. And I was like, wait, wait, wait. <laughs> I'm on count. You can't kick me out. Well, they, they did. They invited me to leave, and and that's uh, I went to to George Mason University uh, and and you know buffed up on a lot of classes and reapplied. And they said some something inside me said you belong back there. And so my uh, uh, I I was dating this young girl at the time, and her her dad was a Christian, and he said, you know what, you pray to your God, I'll pray to mine. And, you know, Buddha doesn't really answer prayers he yeah. just, no i mean it's it's he 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 just doesn't reincarnate you as something worse right. you know like growing up my mom said if i didn't finish my dinner i'd be reincarnated as a duck and you know there's kids uh, you know she said that uh, the kids who cried a lot turned into fire hydrants so you wow. know yeah, so so <laughs> so i, I passed intense. by a fire hydrant i'm like oh my gosh is that little timmy i haven't seen him for a while <laughs> but um but they you know uh but uh, he led me to Christ, and so, and then not only that, I was competing professionally and teaching a um, at a martial arts school where, where I met this young lady, who later on became my wife. And so, wow. uh, I always tell people I had to get kicked out of Naval Academy so I can meet my wife and meet uh, meet Christ. And then by a miracle, I was one of the first people to be reaccepted to Naval Academy. Wow! Yeah, it was an impossible feat, but but it was what God wanted. And I I graduated from there. I went on to serve for 25 years after graduation in the United States Navy as a special operations guy. Uh, so I did deep sea diving. Uh, okay. I recovered John F. Kennedy Jr., his wife, his sister-in-law. I recovered many things from the bottom of the ocean. And then I was also I defused bombs for a living too. So I, I went in with SEAL teams, with special forces teams. Wow to defuse bombs and, and, and clear it away and, and, and uh, you know, for assaults and everything else. Why, why did you, sorry to interject, but why did you feel like, of course, you know, you escaped Vietnam, you know, when, when communism came in, what, what did you feel like you wanted to sign up for the Naval Academy like? 
you know, after all this? That's a wonderful question. First of all, I owe a debt to this country, and I wanted to pay it back. The second thing is when we were in uh, Niger, um, it was during the fall of the Shah in 1979, and those Marines brought us into the embassy, and they stood watch over us. And that look in their eyes that says, you know, nothing's going to happen tonight, not, not on my watch. I wanted to be like them. I wanted wow. to stand watch over people so and cool. protect them. And so I, I felt a calling. God yeah. had a calling for me to, to, yeah. uh, to, to serve in the military, and I did, and that became my ministry also. I mean, wow. I... Uh, through through a lot of things, I was able to to help guide people to Christ. You know, because they would ask me, "Sir, you know, aren't you afraid?" I mean, we get bombed every two days in um, yeah. in Basra, in southern part of Iraq, um, and you know, my men would say, "Sir, aren't you afraid?" I'm like, you know, my God's so powerful. Uh, I'm just as safe here as I am in my bed at home. And and it's that's I, I didn't I didn't come up with that. That was Stonewall Jackson saying. Yeah. But that's that's the thing is having faith and, and having them come come to Christ because they wanted they wanted something to believe in. You know, instead of shells coming at us and bullets coming right. at us, they wanted to know that there's there's life after death. Wow. So that's that, amazing. So so you felt like I mean all all the you know, the the opportunities you were at 40, you felt like you wanted to pay it back. And yes. so you had all this education and then you went to, you know, the Navy. You were there for 25 years in how many countries did you go? Over 40 countries. Over 40 countries. Yes. And where where did you see combat or? Oh, uh, in Iraq, Afghanistan and Somalia. And then I wow. did some, uh, uh, some work in Pakistan too uh, during the earthquake relief. Yeah. Uh, so it, it, it was a, my way also to get in with the Muslim community during uh, during my my last wow. congressional race was uh, I, I was able to say look I, I bled for Islam right. you know I, I fought for Islam I defused bombs to save the lives of men women children I I, I recovered uh, you know airline uh, victims uh, from crashes from the bottom of the ocean I went over to Pakistan and uh, and I. Um, I recovered victims from the earthquake. Right. So, you know, I, I'm asking for Islam to stand behind me because I'm fighting for all of us. Wow. So you have, I mean, your your whole life is like one, like your entire life and your history is like breaking stereotype after stereotype. <laughs> ha, 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 and, and you're conservative and you love God yeah. and you love America, like all the things. And that... I'm African-American because I grew up in Africa too. So. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. An African-American Vietnamese. Here we go. So. Like, how do you feel like, okay, t talking about all the cultural issues and this resentfulness and ungratitude and this, especially, it, it, especially among, or they try to make it seem like it's among minority communities, you know, uh, what, what is your response to that? How do you challenge that from your perspective? We're not a perfect country, right? I mean, Romans 3.23 yeah. says we all, you know, all for all the sin and fall short of the glory of God. Mm -hmm. So... We never strive to be a perfect country, you know, but, you know, right or wrong, it's our country. Yeah. And it's our obligation to, to strive to make it better, right? To, to make a more perfect union. Yeah. And so do you feel like, has that enabled you to connect more with those communities because of your history and your past? Absolutely. I mean, it's just, you know, the, the Asian community in, in Northern Virginia is, is pretty vast and they yeah. understand where we come mm -hmm. from. You know, yeah. I, I've been there. Uh, there's a lot of minorities that that are immigrants yeah i, I live the immigrant story you know people yeah. talk about you know uh the border and everything else and i said you you strive to, to get into america but the first thing you do shouldn't be to break the law right you know you you can't ask for the american dream if you're not going to embrace the American right. laws yeah totally well what was interesting is is and we were talking about this earlier but in in the season where everything locked down in 2020 and of course we rose up and this movement you know, Let Us Worship was born, which was basically, I mean, it started as, hey, listen, we're going to obey God over the government. You know, we ended up having the largest church service in the entire world recorded right here in Washington, D.C., 45,000 people in the National Mall. Now that, it culminated there, but it began on the West Coast. Then we went into cities, uh, uh, you know, Portland, Seattle, Los Angeles, Chicago, New York. The interesting thing to me, and I grew up as a missions kid. So my parents were medical missionaries. I grew up with a very broad perspective of the world, going into unreached people groups, like loving the nations. Then I get painted as a white supremacist and a nationalist <laughs> and all that, you know, it's, it's classic story. But when we were going from city to city, the people that joined with us initially, even that first time in San Francisco, 
it was all the minority immigrant communities. And I was shocked, you know, because I'm like, okay, like the, and, and, but then I started to realize, okay, these people know how precious relig religious liberty is. They understand, they can sniff out when they feel that communistic yes. spirit, right? And so we were in Portland and the Slavic community rallied behind and, and I could find nobody to, 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 to set up our sound equipment, nobody to do worship. And, you know, Antifa was destroying the city. I mean, it was just crazy. And the Slavic community came and they said, uh, I, I said, why do you guys want to help us? And they said, because we refuse to allow the place where we live to look like the place we fled. It's exactly and it. And that was it. You know, that was the thing. Talk a little bit about that. Like, how has that hit home for you in this season where we're feeling this control, manipulation, uh, yeah. really, I mean, uh, socialism, communism, like, how does that hit you? And how do you when, when warn you grew, people? When you were growing up, did, did, uh, your parents always said, Sean, you, you're not living up to your potential. And then, but then somebody else comes in and says, you know what, your, your son's pretty good. Right. Yeah. It, it takes sometimes an outsider to tell, right. tell your parents like, yeah. hey, your, your kid's pretty, pretty spot on there. He, he's pretty locked on. And I think that's what it's going to take for America. A revival here right. is for immigrants like myself to say, you don't want to come from where we came from. Right. You know, we don't we didn't right. escape where we came from to, to for you to turn it into what we ran away from. And so it's going to take some immigrants to remind America how amazing yeah. this country is. Yeah, I mean, la I was literally in Vermont last night, and you know, it's a, it's the least church state in America, and we were out there, you know, serving the f the flood victims, and they had a hundred year flood in the capital, bad, and and um, the people that respond, they're all minorities. Yeah, like it's unbelievable, to me. It's like literally everyone. Times Square, New York, were there two weeks ago, gathering to worship in the city. Four thousand people show up at Times Square white people are the minority. <laughs> so I am seeing like God is literally like, he's using the immigrant community to like stir up America, like maybe save America. I mean, what do you feel about that? I mean, uh, well, um, I, I don't know. I mean, it, it took the Babylonians to, to remind the Jews yeah. of, of, of how precious God, God is. You know, it took, you know, all the years of slavery in, in Egypt to, yeah. to keep people, uh, God's people together. I mean, that's, again, it, the, the immigrant community is fired up. For years, they, right. they were told, you need to vote Democrat, right? Right. And that's, I think, for language barrier, I believe that's where the problem is. Like, if you're saying, these guys are Democratic, which they're not, they're, you know, they're right. a Democrat party, but if you say Democratic, oh yeah, of course I want to vote Democratic. So yeah. I think that's where they go, but they don't realize, you know, and then of course the, the left yeah. controls the narrative. So they say, well, Republicans are just uh, uh, white supremacists or whatever. I mean, they, they'll call me that too. They call me a, a <laughs> white adjacent. They make up terms. The Asian face of white supremacy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's just insane, right? I mean, it's just, uh, and um, I think it, it's just going to, it takes for for them to wake up. I mean, all the stuff yeah. that's going on now with schools where they yeah. where where they're teaching all sorts of garbage, and also right. they're keeping Asian kids down. Right. Uh, it's it's gonna fire up the. Oh, uh, it's. It, it, I mean, and, and the the f the absolute freak out that the Supreme Court struck down affirmative action in in, in universities. Yeah. I mean, you went to those universities. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I mean, what do you think about that? I, look. Racism is racism, no matter what you call yeah. it. You can't take yeah. one race and switch it out in another right. term, right. and it doesn't sound racist. Then it's racist. Yeah. You know, it's you can't you can't go against one race. I mean, yeah. God loves us all. Right? Right. Like that's that's the thing. That's the the you want the more perfect union. Well, that's yeah. it's it's in heaven, and it's it, we have to strive for that here. But you're not right. gonna always reach it here. We're gonna right. fall short. There's gonna yeah. be times where there, there's there's ignorant people all over. I mean, yeah. I grew up all over the world, right? I mean, in, in Vietnam, they hated the Chinese, you know, the, 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 the Chinese hate the Japanese. Uh, in Africa, they, the, uh, in Niger, they hated the Tuaregs. In Madagascar, they hated Indians. The Turks hated <laughs> every, there's, but the right, since this, this is the first generation of human beings, we hate each other, right? right. Cain murdered Abel right. for, you know, for, for his own reasons and because of right. jealousy. Yeah. And that's, that's where, where, um, you know, we need we need to re remember that we we do fall short of the glory of God, and yeah. we need to we need to always be in prayer. Amen. Well, I want to talk about Virginia. I'm, I I I get really fired up about Virginia. Um, when I was a little bit of my story for you don't know or other people. I, so I was born and raised in Montana, and then I moved to the East Coast uh, to Virginia when I was about twelve. 
Um, and uh, my dad worked, uh, was helping lead Operation Blessing, which was kind of a, 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 the mercy and justice and missions arm of CBN. So anyway, we moved to Virginia Beach, military town, um, and it just shocked me as through college and, and then or in my early married years, how blue things turn in Virginia, right? Because I'm like, these, this doesn't make any sense. Like, you know, I, I know Virginia worshiped all, all over the state, lived just a few miles away from where the first cross was planted on the shores of North America in Cape Henry, mm -hmm. right? So went there, did prayer meetings there every year, all that stuff. So then when, when, the, school, when the school stuff happened, um, and, and the parents started rising up and then we saw, we saw a flip happen. Of course, Youngkin got elected. We saw things start to change. I, it really gave me a lot of hope. Like, okay, I feel like things are shifting here. We were just in Virginia a few weeks ago at the Capitol. What, tell me about Virginia. Tell me about your experience. What do you see God doing? And then let's get into obviously your amazing announcement, what yeah. you're pumped about. Well, the, the, um... The last three statewide elections were won by Republicans, right? The, uh -huh. the governor, the lieutenant governor, and, and the yeah. attorney general, all Republicans. And, so, and, and Winsome Sears is a gangster. Yes, she is. And I she's mean, we a love her. great woman of God. I mean, yeah. honestly, she, she's always texting me prayers, and then we, we pray back and forth, and she's amazing. And yeah. so, again, it's, you know, we can't let it turn like this. I, there's a place um, in Monterey, California called Lover's Point. Yeah. The original name was Lovers of Christ Point, but now it's become, they, they took out the Christ, it's Lovers Point, and it's really, Monterey is a very dark place now. Yeah. A lot of witchcraft and, and the, right. the, the, the Wiccan community has really taken over there. And we can't let that happen in Virginia. Virginia yeah. is, I mean, especially down, down in, in Roanoke, they're God-loving right. people. Right. Richmond, too, and, and, and Virginia Beach, and we just need to mobilize Christians across the nation. I mean, you know, like uh, our, our mutual friend, Eamon Ross, always yeah. says that, um, you know, uh, I think only a third of the church votes. Right. And we can't have that. I mean, right. God doesn't say, well, you know, well, the rapture is going to happen, so who right. cares? Right. God expects us to go out and, and, and you know, forge the way for His kingdom. And so we need to really, uh, you know, go out there and, and push forward our, 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 our beliefs, you know, that, that, hey, we're all equal under God. And right. so, you know, your sin's no worse to, uh, than my sin. And, and we, we do, do love every, everybody else. And so, and that's what the left wants to try to twist around. Yeah. But really, we need to get Christians out there to vote. They, yeah. they, that's the first thing they have to do is right. to vote. And this, because you can either fight or, or, or you can just yeah. roll over. And then right. I, I don't think rolling over is something in the American spirit, right? I mean, I mean, say that, tell that to Washington, right. tell that to, to Abraham yeah. Lincoln when he was losing every battle all the way yeah. to Gettysburg. Yeah. We have to go out there and we have yeah. to, we have to, to make our voice heard and, and, and be known. And then, so if you're not going to stand up and, and go, um, you know, run for office, then you need to support those who do because right. unfortunately, you know, it, it takes money. It takes yeah. money and it, it, I learned that the hard way in the congressional yeah, race. Totally. I, I, I ran last year for the 10th congressional district. Yeah, and so you ran in a very blue district. Why did yes. you pick that one? Well, yeah. that's where I live. Okay. I'm not a carpetbagger. I'm not going to yeah. go w run somewhere else where I don't live. Uh, you know, and I believe in, in, in running where I, I live, where my where I go to church at Cornerstone right. uh, Chapel, I, I, where my wife works as the EMT, where my kids are homeschooled, you know, where my friends own businesses. And, you know, that's a Biden plus 19, and we took it down to six. Wow. Six points. And so we wow. moved to 13%. Now, uh, I believe that, you know, God, God intended, you know, Genesis 50 to 20, you know, right? What you meant for evil, God used for good. And yeah. if I had one last time, I would have... Be, I would be fighting right now right. to keep that seat in a right. place where, again, kind of like Monterey, you know, very angry leftist people. Right. Um, but um, but if I hadn't run, I wouldn't have the name brand to run right now for right. the U.S. Senate. And so um, I believe it's it's definitely winnable. I mean, right. Biden won the state by by ten points. So if I'm able to move the things thirteen percent, I've already won the state by three points. Yeah. But we need to get Christians out there because. You know, to get our voice out there, it takes money because the right. commercials are very expensive. And she, yeah. she, she, you know, even though I was the 14th largest uh, fundraiser in the entire uh, uh, Republican side, 435 seats, it still wasn't enough to overcome Nancy Pelosi's uh, money. Yeah. I mean, it's just. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think a lot of, I don't think a lot of 
believers understand that that this you know especially in that in a district in virginia which the cost of media is insane and it's the only way to get your message out there right you know your voice you yeah know, your voice out there that's i mean it's six hundred seventy thousand dollars for one week of advertisement in northern virginia wow and she's blasting the airwaves with you know hungs and extremists he's a He's this, he's that, you, you know, it's just right. like, really? Do I look like an extremist? Yeah. Do I look like a white, white supremacist? Yeah. <laughs> it's just insane. But your story, I mean, I think that, I think that it's, so, it's so powerful, like where God's brought you, what he's done. I mean, I think your story speaks volumes, you know, and, and I think that, you know, it's even my heart sharing with you today that God would broadcast that story out there because it really is a testimony. It's like it says in <clears throat> Revelations that the, testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So the testimony of what God's done in you, what Jesus has done in your life, it's like, it's like prophetic, you know, it goes out there and, and it really, it really is encouraging. I think America needs this kind of story, this kind of leader. Um, did you experience the church really backing you in your congressional run? Like, so my church absolutely did. So, uh, yeah. uh Pastor Gary Hemrick was, I mean, he, we have, I think 10,000, uh, both, uh, in the congregation, both uh, live and, and online, because mm -hmm. he, you know, during COVID, he's like, yeah. you know what, I've got to keep broadcasting. And at some point, he's like, you know what, we're all coming in. Uh, yeah. I don't care. We're all coming to the church and, and yeah. we're going to do it. And everybody was maskless and it was beautiful. Wow. It was nice to see people's faces. Yeah, yeah. But, That's uh, amazing. Yeah, but it's, again, I feel like this is a mission. This is not, this is nothing I've ever dreamt of doing. I, right. I, I want to be an admiral. I didn't want to be a, a, a politician. Yeah. I wanted to, I left a, a career of honor to to politics yeah so it's not it's it's nothing i've ever dreamt about it's just something god i think moved in my heart uh i was in afghanistan in, in december or no, november 2020 when and i left there in january uh six months before the fall of kabul and after the elections i'm like lord you know i was in my room by myself you know like, you know what what's going on here and, and i just help felt you know I felt moved to, hey, you know, I, I think you're done with the military. I've yeah. got another path for you. And as I, I prayed about it, and, and uh, then I prayed it with my, my pastor, and and I, I put in my retirement papers. And 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 then a few months later, and then my wife was just like, no. <laughs> She's like, no. And, you know, she has 51% of vote. But in January of, uh, of 22, after our friends were get, be, getting kicked out for not getting the COVID vaccine, yeah. uh, she said, you know what? You're the only person that can yeah. fight this. And so she said, wow. do it. She gave me a blessing. It was wow. really late in the game. It was in January, uh, late January, uh, I think the 29th or something like that, that we filed. And the primary was May 21st. And wow. So, like, so three months. Wow. And, and people are like, nobody knows who you are. Yeah. You're going to get me uh, radioactive. You, no one's going to touch you. Right. We won that 11-way that primary by over 20%. So I had 53% of the votes and everybody else, the next person behind me, there's this uh, one person who they, they ordained as she's the person, she came right. in 33% yeah. and then so on afterwards. But so God moved that. And then likewise in the general election, we moved it 13%. Wow. But you know, we came just short, but right. I think for this moment right now. Right, yeah, oh, definitely. I mean, God, it's never a straight line. No, it's know? not. <laughs> I know. But I mean, you know, you've, of course, you escaped communism. You've been in all these nations. You've been in combat. You've been in the Navy. Like, do you see this as being like kind of your biggest battle? I mean, this is like the Senate is not a joke, and it's it's intense, man. These these. I mean, I live around all these guys. I, I do. Like right down the street, you know, Bernie's over here, and and uh, and uh, you know, we got a lot of guys right right over here, McConnell's. I mean, it's these guys are. I mean, they kingpins you know and god's inserted you into that conversation how are you gearing up for that you know it's it's exciting and again uh, <laughs> i've never run in, away from a fight i've always uh, you know in my profession when people are running out is when i go running in right, right. whether it's as a diver to, to <clears throat> recover something from bottom of the ocean or or as an eod guy to go in when when you know when there's a bomb and everything yeah. else that's it's my job you know god puts this into the fire but he's also in there with us just like yeah. sadrach meshach and abednego Amen. you know he was always in there with us and so we, we we don't run away from what God, God puts in front of us. Yeah, it's exciting. It's exciting. It's scary, but it's it's uh, you know, I always tell. You ever hear the 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 story of the, the guy riding a tandem bike with Jesus? <laughs> no. Tell okay, me. so this guy had a dream. <laughs> he had a dream one night that he was riding a tandem bike with Jesus, and in the beginning he was in the front. Yeah. And he was the one steering, and right. Jesus in back, and 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 pedaling, 
and and he knew where all the turns were. You know, right. he took it really slow around the turns yeah. and up in the mountains. Yeah. He knew what whatever. Then halfway through, Jesus says, "Let's switch." So Jesus is in front, and he's in the back, and and Jesus would take him around all these sharp corners, up and down. And every time he'd get scared, Jesus would turn around and say, "Shut up and pedal," right? And and <laughs> it, it gets scarier and scarier and scarier. And Jesus would just turn around and say, "Shut up and pedal." Right? And at the end of his journey, he realized that the second half, when Jesus was in charge, yeah. that it was so much more exciting yeah. <laughs> than it was when he was in charge. That's so good. sometimes we, in life, we just got to shut yeah. up and pedal. I love that, man. Shut up and pedal. <laughs> That's amazing. What If there was one message, okay, so right now in the cultural climate, and I know this because, I mean, I've been to 200 cities in the last two years. I don't know that there's a politician in America that's seen more on a ground level of what we've seen. Already this year, I've been in 21 state capitals, right? So we're engaged in so many different facets of culture and people and demographics, and we have a very diverse following, even sometimes politically. You know, people just wanna pray for their state. They may not necessarily be a conservative, they may not be whatever, they show up. Um, well, where do you feel like the sentiment is right now in America? Like. Of course, you have all this corruption that's being exposed in, on so many different levels. And, and in some ways, it can kind of be disheartening. It's like, God, like, man, like, what is happening? You have economy is in flux. You have the polarization. You have the media that's so disconnected from, from, I mean, there's never been more distrust in the media than there is right now. What is your message to Americans, to believers out there with where we are? What do we have hope? For right now we, we, we have always have hope in Christ right yeah. and what does Christ mm -hmm. ask to do in Matthew chapter 5 he says be the salt of the earth and yeah. what does that mean to be yeah. the salt I mean salt can preserve or it can yeah. destroy right yeah. so we preserve meat with it uh, I mean in the Civil War uh, the North destroyed all the salt mines and so that the South could not preserve their meat uh, you know if you guys bugs uh, bug bite you put it on there and, and it, it'll suck out the wound yeah it, it you got a sore throat you gargle with salt but on, on the other hand, you know, you can destroy it too. You, you, you can you salt the fields and they, they, can't, uh, they can't cultivate anymore there. If you have slugs, you put some salt on there. They, they, yeah, sure. Right? Up. So we have, to be the, we have to be the destroyers of all the, the, all the lies and we yeah. have to cultivate and give life to things that are real. And so that's, that we, we're called to be the salt of the earth for a reason. Yeah. To, uh, and so that's what we need to do. We need to stand up and, and, and shine that light as, as bright as we can. I love that. And, and, and as God's with you in this campaign and prayerfully you get elected, what is going to be your main focus for America, for Virginia, for the nation? What would be like the top three or four things that you would like this is what I want to well, my, uh Well, first of all, to protect America, right? I mean, yeah. I, 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 people say, why don't you run for a state or whatever? And like, first of all, that's not where my forte is. Right. My strength is in foreign relations. Right. I mean, I speak three languages. Right. I've been to 40 countries. Yeah. And, and I, I understand national offense. And so uh, we have to protect this country against right. foreign, uh, foreign oppressors, especially with China. Yeah. Uh, and, and then we need to be energy independent. And go, again, going back to how you, what we said before, like God, God kind of put his fingerprints in my life. And, and just like in Paul, you know, he was a tent maker. He spoke right. five languages. Right. He did all right. these things. Right. He, he's Sanhedrin. It, it was amazing. And likewise with me, I, 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 like I said, I speak three languages. I've been many countries, yeah. but also I understand uh, science. You know, I, I, I'm a physicist and, and an engineer. I, my bachelor's in engineering, my master's in physics. I, I work at a, uh, you know, a pretty high tech company right now developing, you know, space communications. Um, so I understand what it takes to, to, for, for us to innovate this country even better yeah. and, and make, make us, you know, energy independent and, and uh, as well as making sure that our technology is safe and secure. Yeah. Um, but I also, you know, immigration, I'm, I'm an immigrant, so I can right. speak very strongly <clears throat> yeah. to immigration laws. Yeah. Uh, I, I know what it takes to secure the border because I've, yeah. I've protected many borders in my, in my lifetime. Yeah. Um, so again, it's where God has put all these right. fingerprints in yeah. my life to, to, to raise me up for this moment. I to, love it. And, and I just use what he gave me. Yeah, man, we, we need, we need your voice. How can people connect with your campaign and what you're doing? Oh, thank you for, for asking. You. It's hung for Virginia, so hungforva.com. Yeah. And and that's that's how we can uh, you know, we'll, we'll you can ask questions there, you can see our our launch video. Yeah. Um and and really, I mean, like I said, just just see this as a mission and if if just 
every viewer gave five dollars. I used to say one dollar, but then my my team was like, "Hey, it costs two dollars and ten cents to process." Like, <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, totally. So we're losing money. That's every like time. a process yeah. fee. Yeah. So so you know, just if everybody yeah. gave five bucks, we, yeah. we would just be able. I'm not asking for a lot because time's yeah. hard for all of us. Right. Yeah. But again. It takes money to get your yeah. voice out there. You know, I, I feel like there's a grace on you. Um, I, I feel like that there's that, that God, and I, I want to pray over you, and then I want you to pray over everyone. But like, there's people that God's raised up that are going to actually engage, engage a group in America that have never, like, come into the political process. And I know for me, like, when I was running. For Congress, like we had people hosting fundraisers, we had people donating that had never given to anything yes. political, and they actually saw it as like I'm sowing into God raising you up as a voice, and like I would not have succeeded and in, and in, and in, in, in the way that I did. Of course, I didn't win, but I wouldn't have had the platform had it not been for those people. So anyway, that's just encouragement for a lot of you out there, like hearing Hunt's story and how what God's called him to do. Like when we're getting behind somebody like this, like it's a seed. You know, it's not just a political campaign for ads. It's something spiritual is taking place where you're saying, this is good soil. I want this voice raised up in my nation, you know, for such a time as this. So I just want to pray for you. Yeah, and I don't want you to pray for everyone else. Yeah. Lord, I thank you for Hung. I thank you for his boldness and his courage. And I thank you for his story, God. You have marked his life in such a profound way, God, in the journey that you've brought him on with his beautiful family, God, and, and how, you've, how you've brought him from nation to nation, from job to job, from battlefield to battlefield. And Lord, here he is, Lord, for such a time as this, God. And, and you have him positioned here. And I just pray favor on him, blessing on him, provision on him. Lord, I pray that you would use him, God, as a clarion call in the midst of a very divisive, confusing time. Lord, we pray, let his voice cut through the crap, Lord. Let it cut through the darkness. Let it cut through the confusion, Lord. Let it be a clear call. And I just pray you'd have release a grace on him, God, to activate believers that have never engaged in the civic process, maybe have never voted before, never engaged in a campaign. Lord, use him, God, as a voice to raise up Christians and mobilize the army of God across America to be engaged and to take back our nation. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And I wanted to pray for, for everybody out there. Just, yeah, please. Uh, Lord, uh, we come to you on uh, bent knees and humble hearts that uh, you may bless everything we do here, that uh, nothing is, is devoid when it returns to you. And, uh, you know, let us take up our shield of faith and, and the, 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 and, and the, um, the sword of the spirit that we may be yeah. able to to just fight back against uh, all this darkness and uh, you know let us be the light of the world and and the salt of the earth and we pray these things in Jesus humble name amen 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 god bless you man i'm excited thank you we're going to get behind you we're going to support you guys go visit his website thanks for tuning in <laughs>